Uh, I am happy. I'm going to have a wonderful multi-personage uh, chat uh, with uh, three wonderful human beings who are in London as we as we chat, uh, staring back at me just now. The uh, first of the three uh, folks I'm going to chat with today is a uh, uh, British composer, David Osborn. Uh, he has composed a great deal of music for the American, uh, the Anglo-American duo, excuse me, we've got to get that straight, Anglo-American duo. That's I think right. that's quite important. For yeah, you. It, cer it certainly is. Yeah. <laughs> it certainly is. Uh, we, we did Timothy Schwarz, the violinist, and, and Jane Beeman, the pianist. Uh, Jane is the uh, Anglo side of that duo, and Timothy is the uh, Yankee side uh, of that duo. We'll get we'll get there, but but just now to, to kind of get things going, what's what's going on is is we're going to be discussing in this interview uh, the the, very, the premier CD by the Anglo American duo, all music uh, by David Osborn, who is looking back at me just now. Uh, you have you guys have just finished a wonderful uh, wonderful sort of uh, what do you call that the live CD release performances in London. You gave a performance at the London College of Music on the seventh. Um, you gave uh, another performance on Thursday the eighth. Uh, uh, same thing at, at another venue. Yeah, yeah, David, yeah. How, since you're there, first first of all, how'd that go? How how how? how it was. Um, I have to confess, Dan, it did rather exceed expectations. The, um, the we did them slightly differently. So at the London College of Music, which is where I'm, I'm a professor and I'm the associate dean, uh, we, we geared it more as a sort of lecture demonstration, mm. so that the students were able to get perhaps different the sort of insights into the music that of just listening to a straightforward performance might not necessarily have given them. Um, and so that was. And that was rather modelled on the equivalent launch that we'd done in Philadelphia back in September. Mm -hmm. And then uh, last night in the central London venue, we did a run, a full performance. It was actually the world premiere of the the Sonata for Violin and Piano, the Prometheus oh. Sonata, in its entirety, uh, plus the Piano Trio, and Tim played the um, the Solo Violin the solo. Sonata. And that was in a more traditional concert format, but because it was a CD launch, it was a, a concert plus a bit of a party. Of course, and by the way, and and, uh, uh, and that's the British way. Let's let's be clear, shall we? Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> that's the Anglo part being heavily played. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me for a moment. By the way, was the was the uh, live per, the performance of the entire CD a, exactly as the as programmed on the CD itself? I'm just curious. No, no, no. We we didn't do the five homage ah. last night. Uh, the reason for that being a, it's a it's a huge play, yeah. but also the five homages have been in the repertoire of, of the duo ever since they started, and we felt that a significant percentage of the people who were there last night will know those works anyway, and we wanted to bring the new stuff forward. Sure, sure, that makes perfect sense. Uh, yeah. Let's see, look, we were we were discussing. Uh, you are professor of creative arts at London College of Music, University right, of yeah. West London. Uh, tell me a little more. I, I'm I'm always curious. I know my professional colleagues are, and, and the public at large. What is a day in the life of David Osborne? Can you just give me an overview of just your typical day in London? Uh, um, well, the first thing is as a as a professor. Uh, we utilize the term professor for the most senior ranks of academics. Um, uh, we use lecturer for the lower ranks of academics. What that basically means, Dan, is I, I don't spend much time at the lecture theater coalface delivering wisdom to freshmen. Uh, I deal exclusively with graduate students and with research students at the doctoral level. So that's my main teaching responsibilities. And then as a research professor, I have this, this sort of uh, double life one of which is composing uh, classical music, like for the Anglo-American duo, for concert performance. And then the reason I'm called Professor of the Creative Arts is because I have this dark side of multimedia, transmedia, intertextuality <laughs> activities, which is, that rather stems from my performance rather than my composition side of mm. things. I get in touch with my inner geek and start doing funky things with real-time interactivity. You just gave me a massive rush to my days at the California Institute of the Arts, yeah. uh, peering into Morton Subotnik's lab, into his <laughs> dark his dark corner of electronic goodies and, and things. And at that time, of course, it was a huge mystery to me. I thought he was out of his mind, of course. Anyway, uh, well, you, that's that's wonderful. Okay, it's time to bring Timothy Schwarz in. Let's let's scoot together, and and uh, it's, we're gonna. 
Shout with Timothy. Red. Timothy, yes. yes. Okay. Oh. And again, intimacy, intimacy, so we don't lose you. <laughs> um, uh, let, let me just uh, give you a little overview, and then, then I'll ask you the same question. It's a silly question, but also very important about, you know, what is the, a day in the life of, of, of people at your, your level? But Timothy, I mean, a, a modest debut at the age of nine with the Philadelphia Orchestra. My, I mean, my jaw dropped. Um, <laughs> you, all of your studies have been at the great conservatories, uh, Peabody, Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music. And you got your DMA at Temple University. Uh, you've been a, 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 the uh, assistant professor of, and head of strings at Rowan University. That's in Glassboro. Oops, I suppose I should say Glassboro, um, yeah. New, New Jersey, uh, since 2015. And your artistic director is something I find very interesting. And maybe you can touch on it a little bit. This techno music uh, uh, project that you have, among so many others. But so it's kind of the same question. What's a, what's a day in the life? So it, it, it is fascinating, and um, uh, at Rowan University, I oversee about 14 uh, violin and viola majors. So these are master's degrees, performance, undergraduate performance, BC education, and an occasional Bachelor of Arts. Uh, so most of my day is one-on-one -on -one teaching, uh, which is wonderful. I also lead the Rowan String Ensemble, which is a conductorless orchestra, uh, and we explore a lot of music a little bit off the beaten path. So last year we did a focus on female composers and minority composers. Um, just last week we did a concert all of composers that were killed in the Holocaust. I saw so, that. I'm very, very interested in this. The uh, Theresienstadt, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was a really moving concert we did just last Sunday. Uh, and in terms of my day, I mean, in, in addition to teaching students, as I'm sure you know, you know, music students, it's really like a mentor. So we have a a number of international students. We have students from very many different backgrounds. A lot of time is spent helping them get their visas, helping them find housing, helping them obtain new instruments, get sponsors. So mm -hmm. it's it's it is like having fourteen kids in a, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, the two of you are conductors. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any any conflicts or problems? Uh, do you have duel often or what? No, oh. <laughs> no. Uh, in, uh, in fact. Um, a couple of years ago, Tim uh, premiered my violin concerto, but with the orchestra that he was the conductor of. So we actually shared the concert. I so, saw that. Uh, Tim, Tim, Tim did the Elgar, and then I came on and conducted my piece while he played. So yeah, we we, we, we can we can we can double team it sometimes. That's yeah. the that's the video that I saw. I think it's up on up on the internet, isn't it? Oh, the, it is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and let's uh, you know, lest I forget, uh, we we are. Uh, I may have mentioned already, but we're we're speaking about anthems after Prometheus, the world premiere CD. It's right, a, yeah. it's a, a, a release. Um, hang on, let me just find it. It's a release of help. I'm I've got it here. I know. Um, uh, yes, it's an Albany Troy release from two, right, 2018, um, and, and also I, we mustn't forget to mention uh, Chalice Lorraine Deacon, who helps in one uh, of David's pieces, Still Waiting yeah. for the Revolution. You are certainly coy with your titles, I must say, and we'll try. To, we'll discuss uh -huh. those things in a bit. But uh, I'm also impressed by this idea, as you spoke about Tim, um, if I can call you Tim. Uh, of course. Occasionally, yeah. Um, yeah. is this idea of the importance, the social importance uh, of music in human beings' lives? And I want to just tell you, and then I'm going to let you speak to it a bit. But I have seen now uh, the the uh, young the young people's opera that was produced at Theresienstadt. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to look the other way for the past 50 years. Now all of a sudden, youth opera groups. Our perform I forgot, Bill, uh, can you remind yeah. me the title, Build is Burn or something like that, I've forgotten just now. Um, the idea that parents are now uh, helping their children understand this terror. Yeah, uh, it, it, it is amazing, it, it really is. And uh, uh, one of the things that I really love about Rowan University where I teach is, is they do have a real focus on social justice, both <laughs> from the past and the present uh, through music. So that, that to me I think is one of our yeah. callings as musicians to really use music to to promote equality and, and also to bring to light things that I think are sometimes easy to forget. Yes, so. exactly. So uh, we're moving forward ever so slowly. I think it's time to bring Jane in, if I may. We're doing a yeah, shuffling of chairs here. <laughs> and we'll speak to the Anglo-American duet. I am, have now uh, the pleasure of uh, bringing Jane Beamant, pianist, 
into this uh, image, who happens just by the strangest coincidence to be married to a certain composer that I just finished sharing <laughs> with. Um, let, why don't I talk to you two as the duo, Anglo-American duo? Jane, first of all, give me a little idea of your of your day too. I know that your I remember the Guild Hall when I was a student. It was in it must have been in the warehouse district before they renovated the warehouse district. It was this horrible place, um, run down, hideous little nook and cranny place. It was so uh, medieval in many ways. Now well, it's brand new. Yeah, there Go. is the London Wall is at the end of the road, and we are in fact the Guildhall School of Music and Drama yeah. is right next door to the Barbican, and the whole Barbican Centre and the yeah. area has been renovated. Yes. So. Yeah. You haven't been there for a while. I so haven't. You would, you would notice a difference. Yes. For example, it's, I went to Trinity College of Music, and it is now ensconced in the the gorgeous Naval College. Uh, that's right. They've moved London. up to Greenwich. So, so, so yes. how how is your day? I know you're a comp, uh, staff accompanist for uh, uh, at a uh, Guildhall School of Music and, and Dance. Is it dance or theatre? I've forgotten. Music. It's drama. Yeah. Drama. Well, music and you. drama. Yeah. So yes, I'm on the staff there on Saturdays. I work with a lot of young and upcoming. You know, rising stars really some of them are particularly talented young students um, in the week I teach at a couple of schools I do one to one instrumental lessons um, and I do a lot of practice of course because I, I work with Tim <laughs> <laughs> and we don't choose the easiest of repertoire yeah. so um, my day is like I say as, as Tim says you know you work with students and then you can help with this and help with that you know not just making sure that their fingerings are correct and that their runs are perfectly even and <laughs> have they got everything else that they need to, to address. Um, uh, well, I was just going to say, now it's, it's time to talk. Philadelphia apparently was the magic point at which all three of you met. Uh, I know David w uh, received his uh, was a doctor's, doctoral degree at University of Pennsylvania. That's right. Um, yeah. And so uh, I know you've spoken to this a million times in various other interviews. I'm going to put up that the radio interview you did in September for the radio public yeah. radio station in Philadelphia. It's a one, wonderful interview. But just kind of give give my crowd uh, this overview. How It's about nine years now you've been together uh, as a duo? As, as a duo, yes. Um, Tim and I, we've known each other since David was doing his, his doctorate at the University of Pennsylvania. He was studying with George Crumb. Yeah. So when we were, David and I were living there, and I joined the Settlement New Music Players, which is a contemporary music group, and that's where Tim and I met. So we've actually known each other for... So at some time, as I understand it, uh, Corleano, the Corleano Sonata, the violin sonata, oh, yeah. brought you together. By the way, I love that piece. I love it. Yes, 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 and we're actually doing it. We were just rehearsing today, believe it or not, because we're doing it in <laughs> Italy again in about two months. Mm. So yes, you have a yes, tour. Bring you back. Yes, yes. a tour back. coming up. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so yeah, having known each other all this time, and we worked periodically, and then you know, on and off, and then about ten years ago, Tim was in London with a with a quartet and we got chatting after his concerts and said oh you know it'd be nice to play again and to do something and he said yeah yeah that'd be great let's look let's look at the Corigliano <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, let's. and that was it so from there we said oh this is great you know so we we focus on British and American repertoire um, obviously it's a you know it's a little niche because we are Anglo I'm the Anglo half I always say that that's my joke <laughs> and you're always first to say so it's quite appropriate I, it's, it's, and it's not much of a joke but that's what I say anyway <laughs> there is there is a hierarchy after all we are just the colonies. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so so what what is it? Well, I well I've got you together for a moment. I'll no doubt have you together again before we're done here. But but uh, what, explain to me. By the way, I had a little chamber music festival here in Santa Barbara. It was called the Santa Barbara Chamber Music Festival. I emphasized American music exclusively, yeah. and nobody came. So my question to you is, what is the what is what is the drive about uh, contemporary music, American British music, about all of this, and and uh, what keeps you going? I mean, I, th I think there's probably two things. I mean, one, I, I do think they're just for classical musicians. There does have to be a commitment to contemporary music, and, and I think it's. I, I of course know the argument that if there's not a name on the program, people recognize, people don't come. But you have to break that cycle Absolutely. at some point. And that that's not at all to say that we should stop playing Beethoven and Bach, of no. course, but. But I, I just think there has to be a commitment to that. Yeah. Um, and I think, 
ironically, um, certainly in the States, uh, British music and even American music is just not done as much as I think it should be. Tell me about uh, and it. So that, yeah, I mean, that, that is part of our <laughs> commitment. I mean, even a standard work like the Elgar Sonata, uh, which we've done many, many times, is yeah. not done that nearly as often in the States as, say, Brahms or, yeah. you know, Beethoven. Uh, and, you know, even something like that, I think, is just really a treasure that, you know... So, so awesome. if I may speak to colonialism just a little bit, uh, the, the idea is that we do have to recognize that the, the American... Um, aesthetic is barely 200 years old let's say if you if you get my drift it's a long slow uh, journey uh, in my case I tried so hard you know there's so much tremendously accessible and I want to speak to that word in a, a little later in the conversation but a really gorgeous accessible American music and you know it's, it was a, it was a tough one I didn't exactly give up but uh, but uh, you know you re re you reach a point kind of when you say hey Maybe I'd better do some Brahms. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <clears throat> a little Gershwin or something like that sometimes, because that, those are names people will come for. And then when they hear other things, then they realize that those are yeah. quite good as well. People begged me to do that, to do exactly that. And of course, I was uh, slightly younger and uh, refused. So it's my yeah. own fault, you see. Uh, <laughs> but what a, what a wonderful th uh, feeling to for me, and I'm sure for you too, you both, for all of you, to... to uh, carry on with this responsibility to help people um, elevate their tastes, their aesthetics. Mm. I remember listening to Bernstein symphonies when I was a kid in high school, and they were gobbledygook to me. I could not figure them out. And of course, you listen, you listen, you listen, all of a sudden they're, they're Mozart, you know, so on. Yeah. So I think it's time, let's do a possibly shuffle chairs, but just let me ask the question first and we'll see. You know, I'm always curious when uh, in, in, we'll talk about the blood, sweat and tears and money and everything else involved in putting together a CD and the years, I mean, it's a tremendous uh, monumental job to put together a CD uh, that people need to know about. I know you, you and I and all of our professional colleagues know this, but the public maybe thinks you just walk in, sit down, and turn on the mic, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm also curious always, and this might need, uh, need David, about the order of the works on a CD. Who makes the discussion? Do you do rock, scissors, uh, paper? What? How, how do you? How do you work that? Out? <laughs> that that was pretty much David. I think did decide the order. So we we might. Do you who, want him to come he, in? And he, talk yeah. About who, that, who who wants to leave the scene and who wants to leave? Sure. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Let's keep Jane in for a bit. All okay. right. Excellent. Let's look at this. Now remember, tidy, 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 tidy and cozy. I love the is way. It, it's I, even easier because we're married. Uh, yes, it is. And also, yeah. I love I love the way your locks are intertwining. <laughs> uh, it's, quite, it's quite marvelous. Well, so that's that's my question, David. Uh, for example, the the uh, the uh, Prometheus CD begins with your most recent, or at least as of the yeah. recorded work. How, how how did you sort that out? The order of okay. these works. So, because actually, the the four works on the CD, they fall into two chronological periods: the the Prometheus Sonata and the Solo Sonata into the Sun are the most recent works from the last couple of years, and the other two works, the Five Homage and Still Waiting for the Revolution, are about 18 years old. I composed them 1999, 2000. Yeah. Um, so. I, it, the question was, would I put the old stuff together and the new stuff together, or would I actually try and create some architecture over the course of the CD? And because we, I was really keen to have the piano trio in, I thought, and, and the last movement is so big and noisy, it really was the, the movement to finish the CD with. It has a sense of finality to it. So that, that was self-selecting. And then the other challenge was, where do I put the solo violin piece? So it's, okay, it was seemed sensible to start with the big five-movement sonata and end with the big four-movement trio. So did I put the five miniatures before or after the solo piece? And in the end, I decided to go new, old, new, old, but also that the solo piece is so distinctive, it helped to break just before the big trio, so yeah, it was it it, it it didn't select itself, and 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 I did have to choose between those in the end. But in the end, also the logic uh, won out. It's quite a logical idea. It, it was quite a logical idea, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and I love the. Uh, we'll, uh, if we have time, we'll discuss these in a little bit uh, more detail. But uh, I love that the, that the solo fiddle piece is pulled from the violin concerto. 
and, yes, and, it is. and independently exists as a tremendously fascinating, interesting piece all by itself. I, I found that incredible. It has, it's had an amazing journey, Dan. It, it, it's, it started from the cadenza of the violin concerto, to which I added the opening gestures uh, from the introduction to the first movement. And I actually worked that into one of my transmedia interactivity projects in which Tim was playing it in, in Rowan University and interacting in real time with electroacoustic manifestations of the same material being produced in London with video and a whole bunch of my students forming in, in real time with it. So that meant that we sort of sketched around it in, the, in real time and then uh, about six months later we were all working together in Vienna and, and Tim and I we then decided that this would make a solo violin sonata so we did a big editorial job in the cafeteria at Vienna airport because we were early for our flight and that's what ended up as the final piece Wow, amazing story, and also I'm so glad that you, in in a, in a sort of rather obscurantist way, uh, brought in your uh, your uh, bits of your uh, tremendously uh, crazy expertise, and that, by the way, changes my entire approach to uh, listening to that solo sonata. I'm now much more curious to go back and have yet another listen, and it takes takes a lot of listening. It it does. I I, I used the word uh, earlier. And it's it's overused, and I want to explain how I use the word because I'm speaking to your music, David, and just in general, I, I find it, uh, of course, imagine all of your music on this CD so imaginative, so interesting, so colorful, so full of you know all that stuff I can th throw at you, and it's all true. But I also like to use the word accessible, very accessible, and here's how I think of accessibility, when not about, oh, it's tuneful and the public will not be upset. No, no. Accessibility about when something makes perfect sense. To me, as a, as a colleague, as a musician, make, when music makes perfect sense, its order, its sensibility, its beginning, its middle, its end, that's accessible music to me. And this is what I have on this Prometheus CD of your music. It's all very, very accessible in that sense. But I want to throw you a, a ringer. Uh, Tim, stand by. Uh, don't, don't come in just yet. Don't come in just yet. But David, uh, what I love about composers, I think, now you'll correct me if I'm wrong, is so many secrets, so many devices, so many hidden sub-basements, so many things that you wait to see how many centuries it will take for someone to discover. I'm um, speaking of the five homages. Can you give me just let's first of all, if you would for me, uh, t tell me the composers uh, uh, and performer uh, who are part of your homage. Why, how, and where are? Can you hint at some of the secrets? Because this is this is really tough. I, I listened to the homage to uh, to Elgar, and I thought, let's see, where is that? <laughs> where is well, that? Well, I can tell you that. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so the five we've got Elgar, Edward Elgar, Beethoven, Olivier Messiaen. George Crumb, and finally Nigel Kennedy. Now, so Elgar is is part of my DNA as a British composer. It sort of runs through me, and it's it's a it's a voice that's informed my voice just because it's been around me all the time. Beethoven uh, is an aesthetic thing more than anything else, Dan, and and this is why it's entitled the Prometheus Sonata and Anthems After the Prometheus. I believe, like Beethoven did, to the very core of my being that music is for everyone. Everyone is entitled to access to and participation in music. It is not for the elite, it is for everyone. And it is, its purpose is to transform the landscape through which we pass. I want, with every note that I write, to make the world a better place because I'm in it. And the only vehicle I have for that is my music. And that I, that, I get that from Beethoven. Um, and, and I believe that very, very much. So that's why Beethoven. Messiaen, because of his techniques. And his techniques helped me develop my techniques. George Crumb, because he was my mentor when I did my PhD, and is one of the most unique and original voices. I, I, think, I, I think I read somewhere that you were his last student. Did I, I think I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and he, he continues to be, I think, one of the great voices of... of the last hundred years, and the homage to the homage just for a, if you'll allow me for a moment, the homage to Messiaen. 
I understood right away somehow. I mean, I just really connected with. The, I, I thought, mm, of course. Yeah, and, and in fact, um, that's that's probably perhaps the most obvious one there, Dan, because it does sound like the last movement from the quartet for the end of time. Now, if you go back to the now, here's here's one of those little tricks for you, mate. The Elgar homage, the arpeggiated figure in that is is take uh, is taken from is very heavily based on a figure from the Elgar Sonata for violin and piano. Bingo. Um, obviously with my notes, but here's the other link. At the end, you've got the homage to Nigel Kennedy, the violin player, obviously, and I, that's because, if you like, that's the mad sound that's in my head when I'm writing for violin. Sorry, Tim. But, anyway. <laughs> um, you know, but the, even though it's going at breakneck speed, that, that homage lasts 90 seconds and covers seven pages. It's got so many notes on it. But that same arpeggiated figure appears again, but written like, like for a, a mad violinist. And the reason for that is Nigel Kennedy studied with the guy who worked with Elgar to play that violin sonata. So it's the same music reworked. So you get little traces, and in the George Crumb homage there's this suddenly there's like a little music box but as if it as if seen from the distance which is a little george thing so there's there's traces of their music and their personality in all of, but the messier and you're quite right you're quite right is perhaps the one that's nearest the surface so ah and i love the way you use that word nearest the surface because music is so sub basement there's mm-hmm. so much mm-hmm. down there, and it's always about discovering, in ter- also in terms of performers and their understanding of work, how many manage to find the deepest. And, you know, I'm a conductor by training, so I look for the sub-basement all the time in, in music. Well, you, you really helped clarify, uh, t- to a great extent, uh, the, the craft and the art. It, there's nothing, uh, you know how some people, uh, um, amateurs, if I can use use the word without insulting too many people, will just dismiss contemporary music as, oh, it's just gob- like art. Oh, I could do that in my sleep, throw paint at a can, you know, all that crap. And they can't be uh, more uh, more incorrect about uh, No, and I think art. Um, what I what I really hope in all of the works on this recording is that the the there is the immense amount of craft that I put into my compositions is it is underpinning everything that you're actually realizing the the fact that each movement and each collection of movements that make up a work are are are, are worked to the point where the the architecture the architecture that makes a beautiful building means that you can just appreciate that beautiful building for what it is yeah. and and that's what I'm, I'm really trying to do interestingly uh, last night at the at the, the premiere of the sonata there was a dear dear friend of mine who, who we I studied to get with at the, uh, at the Guildhall School of Music where Jane works 30 years ago and we had the same teacher and he spotted the same tricks Immediately, uh, uh, and then that, my friend, is why you are a professor of composition at the Royal Academy of Music. He yeah. spotted it straight off. Uh-huh. Uh, high, a high compliment, uh, yes. indeed. Let's uh, let's just uh, we're we're sort of touching on, on the the music in the CD, but I I just have to ask the question about waiting for the revolution, 1999, 2000. Uh, you uh, know, I li- listened to it intrigued, and uh, uh, and the the uh, little. Uh, it, it, speaking of an homage, I mean, it's an homage to the American Revolution in so many ways, and to, is. to Americanism, if you will, yeah. uh, the American whatever it is about Americans, the good part of Americans, let's be clear, there are evil Americans, as we know, as we speak, but, uh, but uh, so still waiting for the revolution, obviously there's something more there, can yeah. you give us some it, secrets? Well, it, it was, it was, it was a if you like another homage, you know, with, I just spent um, many, many years living and working in Philadelphia, the cradle of the American Revolution, mm-hmm. um, all of the symbols of the American Revolution were there. To this day, I think of Philadelphia as my American home. Uh, we go there once or twice a year. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's my, it's my America, and, and, and everything that I, that I, that I love and respect, I wanted to, to put into that piece. From in the slow movement, that the beauty of Shenandoah being viewed 
uh, as if from a distance, as if through a mist, right through to the energy and the dynamism of, of downtown inner city Philadelphia, where we lived, right pretty much behind the Academy of Music, um, and all of that that went with it, the, um, the slightly crazy stuff, very crazy stuff. The, the very crazy stuff. <laughs> Trying to get all of that in and saying, look, this. It's, you alluded to this earlier, actually, Dan. Your revolution started a couple of hundred years ago. It's got. Keep it hasn't going. ended yet. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. You're doing great. Keep, you know, I, keep, keep fighting back. Keep I, I've heard that. Uh, to I've, power. I've heard and read that historians are looking at the present time as uh, very similar to the time just before the American Civil War that we things are that uh, worked up, that volatile. And of course, volatility can lead to wonderful uh, 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 um, apotheoses, if you will. So I'm waiting for an apotheosis. And, and in the end, I trust, I trust my people. I trust, even though we've been dumbed down considerably since I was in high school, a deliberate attempt, in my view, to dumb down the intellectual level of, of human beings, um, I, I trust that in the end we'll be okay. So thank you for your support from your side of the, of the pond. Listen, as a team, I think, why don't, why don't we get Tim back in, if you don't mind, Jane? I don't mind. So, 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 so I'm going out. Go out that way. Okay. And then comes, comes in this way. Sure. Okay. <laughs> and, and, oh, there we go, there we go. And I'm going to try, uh, no, no. try and wind okay. it down here. I see we're at about 30 minutes, so, so I, I do have to wind it down. But just, just can you give me an overview, uh, or not an overview, but, you know, you've been, all, the, all three of you have been a, quite a team, it looks to me, appears to me for some time. So it's an obvious question. Uh, so you've just had the premiere of the first CD. Uh, I know that musicians never let moss grow under their feet. So <laughs> tell me, if you will, anything at all in the works, any even vague plans for the next five-year <laughs> artistic period? You can take that one, Tim. Yeah, well, um, in the immediate future, we, we do have uh, several concerts in Italy and then some others uh, in England uh, in, um, in January. And then Jane and I are playing again in the States. Um, we have concerts in New Mexico uh, planned for April, and then we've already got things for 2020 in Philadelphia area. Um, so we'll be, definitely be keeping busy uh, on that. And, um, you know, hopefully maybe we can talk David into writing some other stuff and put out yet another CD. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think you've answered the question as best you can in the in the circumstance of having no idea what the future will bring. Um, <laughs> what, have I forgotten anything that you're dying to tell the world about? I'm, I'm going to get a I'm going to get a bit of promo in here, Dan. Right. Um, I um I, I recently completed a commission for an orchestral overture for the Susquehanna Symphony Orchestra in Maryland, and they're going to be premiering that in in uh, March of next year, March the 9th. Yeah, and I'm very, oh, yeah. um, very pleased with that. And uh, it, uh, it also has Elgar references in. Really? Yeah, I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Uh, by the way, keep me posted, yeah. please. The whole idea I will, is. I will, I will, I'm, uh, is I'm to, very excited about this. Please. Okay. Well, so uh, let me do. Now it's my turn to do a little plug. Uh, yeah. This interview, uh, lots of videos, the radio interview, uh, excerpts from, because there are wonderful excerpts from, from Anthems after Prometheus uh, CD that are up on the internet. I'm going to bring all that together, plus, you know, where people can click to buy the see all of that good stuff together at performingartsreview.net. That's my uh, plug. And the whole idea of, of, of giving everyone that I speak to, everyone that, whose CD I review, give, giving you a, a, your own sort of independent page is for this very reason to to keep in touch to keep updating my job is, you know I'm not a journalist I'm a musician so my, my job is to is to uh, keep keep the public aware all the time of what's going on so I'm very grateful to have to have been able to uh, uh, be involved in this particular project reviewing of this CD what's going to happen is uh, just so everyone knows uh, the, the process is that I'm going to put up the video interview we're going to conclude here um, rather quickly put up the page, get everything up there because, again, as I mentioned maybe earlier, the the um, number of people visiting the website is really exponentially growing. 
And there's no reason for them to sit around and wait for me to come up with my three or four paragraphs. So I, I want to get all of this good stuff up. It's a visual society. We're in a real paradigm shift these days. Get that up, and then, then I'll follow with the review. It's, it's been uh, just a great pleasure. Let's get Jane in the background. Can Jane step in between the three? <laughs> so let's, yeah, let's get all quite cuddly. I do hope, uh, I, I pray to Zeus or at least Prometheus, uh, the, that we are able to keep every, have been able to keep everyone in frame. It's a bit bit tough, uh, but I hope that's going to work. It's been a great pleasure speaking with you. It looks like a gorgeous day. Oh, it's evening, isn't it? So it's not it's day. Evening. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely evening. So that's but all that's artificial. artificial sunlight. Though. Yeah. So I was going to say, it, it, it looked like a sunny, a sunny California day, but in yeah. fact, it's artificial. Anyway, uh, congratulations on the uh, CD premiere past couple of evenings. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting this up. I know so many people are going to be so interested. And, and the video interview I'll put up uh, almost immediately on Facebook. It's amazing. Great. It's just amazing. As you all know, I'm sure, the, the uh, tremendous uh, uh, power of these social media. It's, it's marvelous yeah. to, to get the word out. Yeah. So, uh, I think we're done. Uh, anybody have any last critiques or moments of... Uh, to just say a th to thank you for all that you've been doing yeah. as well. We know it's a it's a very difficult task <laughs> to keep doing these sort of things. So thank <laughs> thank you so much, yeah, for mm. for championing new music and and classical music in general. So. And some and somehow managing yeah. to gab at people for a half an hour. Oh, got it. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, I think we're done. Many many thanks indeed. Right. It's been great pleasure. Thank you, Dad. Right on. Great. Okay.